So I ran into a problem the other day, and it's one that I'm sure you've encountered in the past or maybe even right this moment. My C drive was full. Now I'm using a one terabyte NVMe drive, and a few years back that may have seemed like it was plenty of space. But as game sizes keep increasing, unused storage real estate is becoming more and more rare. Let's go over some operating system and game installation space requirements real quick to help get a clearer picture. The games listed are typically what I use for benchmarking hardware and represent a good smattering of a couple genres. To start with, a one terabyte drive doesn't actually have one terabyte of usable storage space. It is closer to 930 gigs. So right off the bat, 70 gigs gone. Windows itself takes up around 27 gigabytes for a fresh install. And some basic programs, Armory Create, Razor Synopsis, or other component control software, and you land around 900 gigabytes. That's not all usable though, because as a rule of thumb, you should leave 10 to 20% of your hard drive empty at all times. Filling that all the way up can lead to some very bad things. So let's just save 100 gigabytes to play it safe. So there you go. That one terabyte drive is now 800 gigabytes of rapidly diminishing gaming storage. Let's throw on say Red Dead Redemption 2, 119 gigabytes. Microsoft Flight Simulator, 109 gigabytes with regular 100 gig updates. Call of Duty Modern Warfare with Warzone? That is a whopping 133 gigabytes. CSGO is, well, actually rather light at 27 gig. And the winner for the storage destroyer is Shadow of the Tomb Raider, weighing in at 181 gigabytes. That brings you down to a few videos shy of a full C drive. Enter this crispy little wafer. This costs more than a 3090 at MSRP, but what it can give you is unlimited access to your entire game library at blazing fast speeds. The Team Group MP34Q NVMe SSD is a whopping 8 terabytes of storage space aimed at single-handedly tackling all of your storage needs in one solution. Now this drive uses 3D QLC NAND flash memory communicating over a PCIe Gen 3 interface. You won't be seeing Gen 4 speeds here, but then again, you won't really see an eight terabyte Gen 4 drive on the market yet. So we are left with the still formidable claim speeds of 3,400 megabytes per second and 3,000 megabytes right. If you look at the same capacity drives from other companies like Corsair with the MP400, Sabrent with the Rocket, and PNY with uh, the CS2130, I believe it's called. They all use the same QLC memory. So the speeds are going to be pretty much identical or within the margin for error. What does change slightly is the claimed endurance or terabytes written, which Team Group says will be up to 1800 on this drive. That's 200 higher than the Corsair MP400 of the same capacity. So bonus. Now using a slew of storage benchmarking tools, we can see that the numbers the team group has boasted are pretty close to accurate. Crystal Disk Mark gave an initial read speed of 3316 and a write speed of 3007. This drops quickly as expected when the cache is used up. These drives are meant for those quick data pulls and writes rather than a sustained transfer. There is no heatsink included with this, but most motherboards these days do have one covering the M.2 slot which will keep temperatures in check. During testing, the max temps that I saw were 70 degrees under full load, and that was with minimal airflow and the motherboard heatsink removed. That's a worst case scenario for airflow for sure. So it performs on or better than other drives in this class. So I guess the big question is, should you get it? Why on earth would you need so much storage on a single stick? Well, if you're like me and your motherboard only supports one M.2 SSD, it's either one big drive like this or a smaller drive for your operating system and a slower, larger capacity SATA SSD. The catch there is that those SATA drives can run as much as six times slower than this. The second reason is that you just want the fastest drive possible with the biggest capacity. I can see the appeal of that if you do a lot of video editing as this can be used as a target for your editing software. My two terabyte external SSD fills up insanely quick on some of my larger projects. Now, is this the best option out there for an eight terabyte NVMe drive? 
Well, I haven't tested any other ones, so I can't compare it directly, but I can say that it lives up to the advertised numbers. And having a little extra headroom for terabytes written gives it a slight edge over some of the other companies. In the end, this is targeted at a very specific market, those that are looking for massive storage solutions. Now, if that's you, I think it's worth taking a look at. Now, if you want to pick this up and you're in Qatar, you can head to Store974. Now, that is linked down in the description. You can also head to their website at www.store974.com where you can pick this up. And if you do go there, go ahead and use the code BartmansBits at checkout or in the store where you can receive a 3% discount on your purchase and 3% of that purchase will come back to help out this channel. Now, I'm going to carefully put this back in the package before I drop it. And I'll see you guys in the next one.